Now I've removed the uh, gimbal from the drone so we can get at the yaw motor which is located up in here. So we have to take off this cover. We need a zero zero Phillips screwdriver with a fairly long shaft so as you can get at some of these screws that are down in quite a ways without damaging the ribbon cable. That's been removed. Now we have to take the top off. I've already taken out some of the screws. I'll just pop this out quickly so you can see where we are. Very carefully, you have to pop these two up. And I use my thumbnail. You have to have a little bit of nail. You can use something else small. Pop those up. They will come off if you're not careful. Pull the ribbon cable off and we can see that this one's been replaced before it's been worked on this is an aftermarket cable dji cables have a blue film on there instead of that these i don't approve of these i approve of the oem cable and you can buy the oem cable off many suppliers not just dji you can find them on ebay if you can tell it's DJI because it has blue stickers on it covering up the uh, glue that holds the cable in place. I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can so we can get to the yaw motor. And quick for me is not real quick. I'm quite old and have arthritic fingers. It popped right off. But that's the cover that covers up the ribbon cable. And you lift the, the tab on this one carefully. I use a pair of tweezers and just kind of pop it out of there. And there it is. Now we have to Take the stop off the top of the yaw motor, which is right here. There's two screws. And I try to keep everything organized. It might, might be wise to have a piece of paper so you can put the screws on the paper and mark where they go or take photos. Now that I have that off, and that's the stop to keep it from going too far one way or the other. That's the actual yaw motor. Now you have to remove this and there's a couple of ways to do this. The, uh, the way it normally would be done is, would be to take these two screws out here. And these are a number six torque. Take those out. Take the yaw arm off. And I'll show you how that's done. I'm not going to disconnect it totally. This is a number six torque. The other tool you'll need. And I'll list the tools. There, there it is right there. Pop that tab. Take that off of there. Now you have just this part in your hand. And you can remove the three screws. One, two, three. Remove those. Someone's worked on this, as I said, and there are only two screws. The top screw is not there. But two screws is okay. There's the yaw motor. Now you can buy yaw motors on eBay. I recommend buying them when they look like this. Without the casing. This is the casing. It has magnets in it to tell the hall sensors where the yaw motor is located. If you don't reuse this casing, the uh, camera will point left, right, but it may not point straight forward. And there's no way to adjust it. The factory can do it, but we cannot. Now, you need a vise. At least this is the way I do it. Some people use a press where they make up their own press. I use this punch, which is a 
332nd happens to be the one I have, a small hammer, any kind of hammer. This is a Stanley. And you put it in the vise like this with the vise open just part way so that the uh, shaft can go down through. And you just tap it down through, just like that. That will remove this. Now you need to reuse this. I mark it with an O on it, meaning that's the original, and that's the one that has to go back. This is the bad sensors on here, and I can't make it small enough, I don't think, so that you can see the sensors. But they have scratches on them. The sensors are there. I use typically a uh, jeweler's loop like this and look at it through the jeweler's loop so you can see better but in any case it definitely has scratches this is no good you buy one when you get it if it has a casing on it take the casing off check the sensors with the jeweler loop or a good magnifying glass make sure there are no scratches whatsoever now you have to take the old casing, put it on, make sure it spins smoothly, put it on the vise and tap it very carefully until the shaft is flush on this back side and it should spin very smoothly. If it doesn't spin smoothly, take it off and do it again. Now, we, all we have to do now is put this back together. That's in there like that. Put the two screws in that we took out. And as I say, you may want to mark, you know, which screws are which. So when you go to do this, you'll be able to get the right screws in. There's different size screws. These that hold the motor in are a little bit bigger. That takes care of that. It's on here, it spins freely. Next thing we want to do is put it back in here. Connect the yaw ribbon cable. Push it down in carefully. Flip this lid shut. Now it's ready to go back on the camera. Put the camera, this in like this, torque, these were torque screws. And we put it all back together. Now, because this was an aftermarket cable, it, it actually came off fairly easy. The uh, OEM cables stick a lot better because they use a better double back tape. I don't normally totally assemble this. I do go this far, you have to put this back on. If you don't put this on, you can't read the hall sensor properly. So I always put that back on, but I don't put any of the other covers on until I've tested it and make sure it works. There's nothing binding. So for test purposes, I leave this off. I leave this cover off and I don't put this back on. You do have to do this. You have to get this back on. You have to find the two small screws that came with it. And of course they fall very easily. And 
F1, that's that one, here's the other one, now once you get that on you gotta make sure this swings freely, sometimes when these crash this gets bent, this stop arm that's on here gets bent and rubs against the bottom of this. The other thing you have to be careful of is when you put this back on, that it doesn't rub on this. So it has to be exactly right. And I use a pair of uh, needle nose pliers like this, small needle nose pliers to bend it if I have to. But you have to have that stop on there. So here's the camera partly together. We're not going to put everything in as I said. I put the top back on. I only use a couple of screws. And my old arthritic fingers have trouble with these. Put this aftermarket cable back on. It seemed to work okay video wise. So we're going to leave it for now. If you have any issues with video where it's got a lot of static in it or no video, I recommend immediately replacing the aftermarket ribbon cable with a factory OEM cable. Now we have it back together enough so that we can test it. To get the vice out of the way. Put it on the drone. I always put one screw back in. So the camera doesn't fall when you're testing it. One will do that. Now we've replaced the yaw motor and we're going to see if we were successful or if I have to redo this whole video. And there as you can see the shaking has stopped. And it now works as it should. That's how you replace the yaw motor on a P4P or P4 standard. They are exactly the same yaw motor. So when you go online, you can buy either one. As I said, I recommend buying it without the casing. If you get it with the casing, you'll have to take the casing off and as you can see, I replace a lot of yaw motors. These are the casings that came with them. I keep them. And the reason I keep them is because on the back of the yaw arm, right underneath here is the uh, encoder for the yaw motor. And if you have to replace that, then the casing on the motor will no longer line up. Uh, you'll end up with a camera that points left to right again, and I can use one of the other casings. I have to keep swapping them until I find one that makes it point straight ahead. Sometimes takes hours. Thank you for watching my video. I hope it's a little better than my original. And again, I'm Ted with Drone Ted, and you can contact me at any time if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel.